On the 8th of July 1986, Jerzy Kokoczka and Tadeusz Petrovski of Poland reached the summit of K2. They established a new route on the southern face of the mountain. The route is called the Polish Line. However, their success came at the cost of a great tragedy. During the descent, Petrovsky fell to his death. This is the story of their tragic ascent. In the summer of 1986, there were dozens of climbers on the south side of K2, including the best names of Himalayan mountaineering and great individual of the sports. Among those were Jerzy Kokoczka and Tadeusz Petrovsky from Poland, who intended to summit K2 via a new, typical route leading through the southern wall of the mountain. That season, 27 climbers summited K2, and three new routes were opened, all with a high level of commitment. Sadly, it was the deadliest year in K2's history. Thirteen climbers died on the mountain. Jerzy Kukoczka and Tadeusz Petrovsky were members of an international expedition to K2 under the leadership of Dr. Karl Halikofa from Germany. It was Kokochka's 11 8,000 meter peak and Petrovsky's post. They left the base camp after a few days of their arrival. The conditions were poor because there were a lot of snow everywhere. They set up a camp at about 7,800 meters. The next day, they reached 8,300 meters. There was a rock barrier which blocked their way to the summit ridge. They bivouacked under a menacing rock wall for the night. The next day, they decided to continue to go lightly, because with backpacks containing all camping equipment, they will not overcome the barrier. They climbed cautiously and fought for every step. After five days of tough climbing, finally they reached the summit of K2 at 6.25 p.m. on the 8th of July 1986, marking a new route on the southern side of the mountain. They were on the verge of exhaustion. They spent much more time than they intended. They no longer had food and drink. However, they established a new route on K2 which is called the Polish Line a very difficult and dangerous route which was threatened by Serex and had been called suicidal by Reinhold Messner. The route is so avalanche prone that no one else has ever considered a new attempt. It was dark during the descent along the normal route. Kokoczka and Petrovsky had to camp at an altitude of about 8,300 meters in deteriorating weather conditions. It was quite a difficult bivouac, without camping equipment, without tents, and even sleeping bags. Just 400 meters below at 7,900 meters, they had another bivouac, with only a thin camping sheet to protect. It was even more difficult. They were tired and dehydrated, because they had not eaten and drunk anything for two days. Shortly after leaving the second bivouac, Petrovsky was so exhausted that he had trouble fastening his belt. He followed Kokochka down the slope. In the middle of the slope, Kokochka stopped and looked up to make sure Petrovsky was following his footsteps. Just below the finial of the Avrudzi rep at about 7,700 meters, Kokochka raised his head again and saw a cramphon falling from Petrovsky's leg. Kokochka screamed something, but what happened in the next second he couldn't predict. Another cramphon was flying down. Tadeusz was only holding onto the ice axe. But it was too late. No one could change anything. Tadeusz tried to fight only for a moment. He was in the situation of a man who suddenly had a ladder pulled out from under his feet. The eyes extended, so the whoosh blew down. They were exactly on the same line. He just screamed, Yorick. 
he couldn't do anything. And such steep eyes, I mean without cramp on as defenseless. Kokochka wanted to catch him but couldn't. He only managed to drive both eyes axis as hard as possible into the eyes at the last moment. Kokochka felt a powerful blow. So the whoosh literally slid down on him and flew on. It took seconds before Kokochka regained consciousness and made sure that he was still standing. When he looked behind, all he could see was snow planks rolling down the steep slopes and a gutter carved into the shallow snow that led straight down. The Dawush Petrovsky fell into the abyss and died. About 100 meters down the flats, where the slope ended with a wall, the last trace of the Dawush was also irretrievably lost. Kokochka tried to scream. But after a while, he realized that it didn't make the slightest sense. He tried to search for him, but hours later, he gave up. He headed down towards the tents. He was looking for a radio. On the way down, he met Koreans and requested them for a radio call to Yanush Meyer at base camp. Kokochka informed Yanush about the accident. Yanush and others looked against the wall as much as they could, but no trace of Petrovsky was found. There were Swiss climbers on the wall, but they also couldn't find any sign of Petrovsky. They even climbed higher in search of him, but there was no trace. They looked very depressed. Just before sitting up to the top, Petrovsky described his emotions about K2 as follows. There is a mountain in front of me, about which I dreamed for many years. Now it has taken real shape. From youthful fantasies and male fascinations, dreams and desires, it has become a reality. I finally have it before my eyes. Huge magnificent, challenging. It soars into the sky to dizzying heights. A swift pyramid of slashed rocks, armored with ice and covered with eternal white snow. A silent challenge to the people gathered here, and one of them is me. How inconspicuous we are in its space mere dwarfs against its monumental backdrop. And we, her potential tamers, have gathered a whole swarm. Like moths to the light, we fly to this mountain attracted by some magnetic force. Regardless of any obstacles or difficulties, that it spares no one. Many have solely sensed their wings on its icy slopes. However, this will not be a warning to successor. Such is the nature of this strange species of people called mountain climbers. And I am one of them. I have already started my fight with the mountains. It was not the first and not the last time in the history of foolish Himalayan mountaineering when climbers failed to report their success to the base. That summer in 1986, however, had extremely tragic statistics. It was the most tragic summer in the history of K2. Three Polish climbers, Pojje Rose, Tadeusz Petrovsky, and Dobroslava Medvedev Hul died on K2 that summer. In addition to them, ten more climbers of different nationalities died on the slopes of K2 as well. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video and are new here, please consider subscribing to the channel for more such videos to come in the future.